Skyrim is not exactly new, but with Fallout 4 out, I can't help but think back on how great it actually is. Bethesda knows what they're doing. With that in mind, today Game Ranks would like to talk about 10 Skyrim secrets. Number 10, there are three secret bosses in Skyrim. The first is called Volthuriol. It's a dragon hanging out in a cave. You can find him in Blackreach, where there's a big orb hanging from a ceiling in the cave. Use the unrelenting force shout on that orb. The second boss is Karstag, and can be found in the Dragonborn DLC in the Castle Karstag Ruins. In the back of the glacial cave, you'll find a skull. That's his. Take that skull to the castle Karstag ruins and place it on the throne. Finally, the Reaper is present in the Dawnguard DLC in a building in Soulcairn. There's three Reaper gem fragments and you need to collect them and place them on the altar inside the building. Number nine, in Skyrim, there's a song called Ragnar the Red. Bards play it all over the place and a lot of people in Skyrim claim that it's the first song they learned. The final line of the song is, and the braggart named Ragnar was boastful no more when his ugly head rolled around on the floor. Coincidentally, there's also a headless horseman riding around Skyrim, and there's some interesting evidence to say that it is Ragnar. If you follow him, he's supposed to take you to Hamver's Nest, but there are multiple accounts of him leading people to Rorikstead, which the first line in the song Ragnar the Red is once there was a hero named Ragnar the Red who came riding to Whiterun from Ol' Rorikstead, meaning that's where he was from. Coincidence? I think not. Number eight, the silver Overhand, a group of werewolf hunters, believe that lycanthropy, which in Skyrim is the term for turning into a werewolf, it's also present in a lot of other mythology. Well, they believe it's a disease, so they actually carry cure disease potions and ingredients to make them. So if you need any of that stuff, I mean, the Silver Hand are hostile anyway. They're jerks. They just attack on sight. So they're really not that much different from bandits. And since you can't join the Silver Hand faction, who cares? I'll just take those potions and ingredients. Thank you very much, Silver Hand. Number seven, Rorikstead may actually be a secret cult of deity worshippers. Okay, so there's a lot of information on this, but I want to get into this. Rorikstead used to have really inf fertile land. But recently, that changed a lot. It's so fertile, people are considering selling the topsoil from Rorikstead to other places in the world because they think they could make a good profit off of it. On top of that, there is somebody named Rorik alive in Rorikstead. The name of Rorikstead comes from the farmstead that Rorik owned. Supposedly not this Rorik. This Rorik fought in the Great War, bought the land, and somehow made a profitable farm out of it. Now, it's just a bit weird that a thousand years apart, two people named Rorik basically did the exact same thing. The first one causing the town to be named Rorikstead. The second one just randomly showing up and fixing the town. Finally, the old guy responsible for meeting and greeting people is super shady. In fact, if you go to the mayor's house during dinner, you can see him talking to the mayor's daughter about new magic, quote unquote, but then tells her to keep quiet about the whole thing. On top of that, on him, he has some serious Daedra worship books, and in the mayor's house where he lives, also keeps more of them. People have actually discussed this endlessly, and if it's true, it's so cool how they left these small bits of a mystery for you to figure this out on your own. Number six, if you're in need of some healing potions of varying strength, strengths, head over to Solitude because there are several of them placed in random places around the town. Now, for whatever reason, they're intentionally hard to reach to the point where a lot of people have made connections that they have something to do with the Dark Brotherhood quest line. But honestly, due to the fact that they're randomly placed, I don't think that they are. But it's certainly useful if you can manage to get them anyway. Number five, the College of Winterhold's architecture very closely resembles the symbol in the Agma Infinium, which I'm not going to go into because that really starts a rabbit hole. But seriously, look at this. I know it's not one-to-one, -one, but they probably didn't want to just give it away. Why is that tower much smaller than the other tower? Like, that's not a coincidence. It's too similar. Number four, Mayik the Liar, a cryptic Khajiit character, has appeared in Morrowind, Oblivion, Elder Scrolls Online, and yes, Skyrim. He's clearly very old because all of those take place in different eras. You can find him wandering around the world unless he's in Elsewhere, which is accessible only by the console and acts as a place to put him when he's not anywhere else. Number three, the Divine's names actually come from people who worked on the Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall. Julianos was named after Julian Lefray. Stendar was Daniel Star, or Dan Star with a couple of letters reversed. RK was RK Deutsch. Mara was Marilyn Wasserman, author of The Real Baron Zaya and King Edward. Debella was named after Mary Jo Debella. Akatosh was named after a beta tester named Lawrence Zidlowski, who went by Smaug online and signed his posts, also known as the Old Smaug himself, which the initials are Akatosh 
which is pretty cool if you ask me. Dragon, smile, you get the connection, right? Xenathar was based on a tester named Stefan Zepp. Shiogarath was actually supposedly the alter ego of Ted Peterson himself. Ted, or Theodore, or Shagorath. And Joan and Jode were both beta testers, Judy Weller and Joan McCown. The only divine name they flat out made up was Kynarath. Number two, when a citizen of Dawnstar dies, a red mountain flower is placed at the stairs of the White Hall. Dawnstar is actually one of the major cities in Skyrim. It's the capital of the Pale. It has a pretty bloody history because the destruction of a fortress in Dawnstar actually led to martial law and led to the creation of the Guilds Act, which made the Fighters Guild, Mages Guild, and Thieves Guild. Is it really that significant a red mountain flower is placed on the stairs? Not necessarily, but it's an interesting fact and one that it's cool they followed through on. And finally, number one, and this one is a doozy, followers, as in companions, can open all chests. Whether it's a master chest, a novice chest, or something in between, they can open it. Not gates, but chests. And that can be pretty useful. All you have to do is go into the follower commands and point them towards the chest, and that's it. Very useful if you can't get into one and you have a follower. I mean, if you don't have a follower, it obviously this doesn't matter to you, but it's not that hard to get one. I mean, the easiest way is to make outrageous claims that nobody with a brain would believe and then find out who believes it, tell them that you're a god or something, and that's that. They follow you forever. Although that's not always a great thing, some people are very annoying, particularly people who believe you when you say completely not nonsensical crap that no one with a brain would believe. <laughs> kind of the, the cult method, you know. There are other methods. Don't do the cult one. It's, it's bad. Do you have any great Skyrim secrets? Make sure and leave us a comment as well as click like on this video. If you're not subscribed to Game Ranks, now is a wonderful time to do so because we upload brand new videos every single day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this, and we will see you next time right here on Game Ranks.